The two Ohio candidates, Vance and Ryan, battle it out over China. Your next guest says the election is going to come down to, quote, gas and groceries. Joining us now is Libby Cantrill, head of public policy at PIMCO. And Libby, I don't know if you saw it yesterday, New York Times, new poll. I posted it out as well. 44% of likely voters surveyed by the New York Times and others said the most important issue for them was the economy and inflation. 44%. The next highest was state of the democracy at 8%, and then everything else was, you know, a couple of percent. Were you surprised by that? Yeah, I mean, Brian, in some ways, uh, some ways, no, in some ways, yes. I mean, if you, um, if you just think about what's happened with gas prices over the last year, up, you know, 10%, grocery prices up 13%, um, this sort of axiom in politics uh, it is an adage for good reason. Uh, gas and groceries do kind of weigh on voters. It's, it's ever present in terms of what voters see and what they experience. So in many ways, no, I'm not surprised that this is a polling as sort of the top issue. I think what is surprising, um, just given what's happened over the last you know, few weeks, last few months, in light of the road decision, um, it looked like abortion rights were kind of right up there with, with the economy and with inflation. That has receded. So I think that might be what is surprising about that polling. There was a lot of fervor, a lot of enthusiasm yeah. about that particular issue in August that does seem to have been receded and supplanted again by the good old gr gas and groceries. Well, you know, I'm not a huge believer in polls. I think we've learned in the last decade or so, Libby, that a lot of the polls maybe aren't worth the paper, quote unquote paper they're written on. That said, that said, if you believe this poll, to your point, abortion, obviously an extremely emotional and passionate topic for many but it only came in at 5%. Climate change, I think, was 3%. And COVID was 0.5%. In fact, COVID actually was a hash mark among certain age groups. I mean, this is an economy and economic-related election. That's it. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, right, James, going back to James Carville and, and the saying it's the economy, stupid. I mean, the economy, again, still looms large. Now, Brian, we should just caveat and put that, that one poll into broader context. That is just one poll. Some of the other polling does show that some of these other social policies are really important, particularly for Democrats um, as it relates to abortion rights and also in, in, in terms of gun control. The other thing I would just sort of point out here, Brian, which is important, yeah. Is, is on sort of the enthusiasm issue. Because what we've seen is that Democrats have actually, in terms of their enthusiasm, their engagement around the midterms, that has increased very significantly over the last few months. That does seem like it is related to, again, this yeah. Roe v. Wade decision. Um, so again, it still could impact it could still could impact and inform the election outcome, but may not be showing up in some of the polling that uh, you're saying. Well, let's talk about polls. I was looking at a bunch of polls last night, as a matter of fact. I was looking, you know, and of course, the, the polls vary. You know, one, one poll will show some guy up seven points. The, the, another poll will show the same person up two points. Pennsylvania obviously looks, looks like it's closing in. Ohio is very close. But what was shocking to me, Libby, were a few things. Number one, Oregon may elect a Republican governor... She's leading for the first time in, what, 40 years. Nevada now is leaning toward the Republican Senate candidate. And is it even possible that New Hampshire could go Republican? I mean, these were not things we talked about with any seriousness two months ago. Yeah, although, although I will say that in June, a couple, you know, you know, four months ago, we were talking about that. I mean, it, it seemed like New Hampshire was definitely in play. It seemed like Nevada was definitely in play. Again, I think Democrats sort of got their hopes up um, that given some of the legislative achievements of President Biden and given that Roe v. Wade decision that those concerns were in the rearview mirror, but as you point out, they were not. Again, the economy, gas, and groceries uh, are looming large. I think from from kind of a markets perspective, though, Brian, and sort of zooming out on that, the most important thing, A, is control of the House. That mm -hmm. looks like, regardless of what the margin is, it looks like Republicans will take back the House. And then Senate control, that's probably a toss-up, because to your point, this polling is imperfect. Uh, and with all of these in really important Senate races, whether it's Ohio or Pennsylvania or Nevada or Georgia, or Georgia, all of them are polling within a margin of error. That is a toss up. But from a markets perspective, control of the House by Republicans or control of the House and yep. the Senate does 
doesn't make that much of a difference. It's really the House is the most important in terms of the gridlock and the and the over and the is oversight that we quickly, see the Biden administration. I'm going to poll yeah. Libby Cantrell. What, what's the, yeah. what's the odds that between Pennsylvania and Georgia we will not have an outcome the day after election day? Yeah. And I would zoom. I would, I would zoom in on, on Georgia in particular. Of course, one candidate has to get a 50 percent threshold in that election in order to stave off a runoff. Yep. That seems difficult. That means that we won't know maybe until the direction of the, the Senate until December 6th, which is when the runoff for uh, for Georgia would be. Whoever loses, I guarantee you that side is going to say there was something wrong with the 100 percent chance. Libby Cantrell, Pimco, thank you very much.